Hello there, bibliophiles, and uh, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> uh, this is Goodnight Tokyo by Atsuhiro Yoshida. I hope I said that right. It looks like a lovely name. So the interconnected nighttime lives of different inhabitants of Tokyo are explored in this little book, with each chapter starting at 1 a.m. Mitsuki works at a movie prop warehouse and has to source loquat fruits in the middle of the night. Kanako works at a 24-hour advice call center and has a brother who went missing years ago. Cab driver Matsui also wishes to find someone he knew long ago. Shuro goes to a late night movie in Matsui's cab and talks about being an actor, or is he really a detective? There are other characters too whose lives and problems we see and whose uh, loose threads of their lives tie them all together. So this is quite a thin one. It's only 174 pages. So I'm a little bit cautious of saying too much about the different characters. There's quite a few of them um, because it would sort of reveal too many plot points. Um, but loosely speaking, the chapters are all short stories about the lives of people who live in Tokyo and who are active at 1 a.m., which uh, I personally relate to. <laughs> but as you read, the pieces uh, of all the lives sort of fit together like puzzle pieces and the different characters' lives interact, uh, interact and interconnect. The stories are mostly about small personal things or personal problems with the end of each chapter flowing into the plot opening of the next, mostly. At first, the overall picture being painted is soft, a little vague. You sort of wonder, you know, okay, is it just short stories or whatever? And then the pieces start to come into focus and then fit into a larger story or the world being created. And um, I thought this was really cool. It was almost like reading a mystery novel, the way you're sort of like, okay, like, you know, these people are connected and that you sort of start picking up on things like, oh yeah, that's that person from that other story or... Um, these people know each other this way, and I think that's really, really cool. It was very um, just subtle and very sort of masterfully done. So Ats uh, Atsuhiro Yoshida, uh, the author, was born in 1962 and is already a best-selling author in Japan with over 40 books to his name. Um, having been published in several languages already, this is his first book translated into English, and I'm super curious about his other books. I hope that this will be the first of many um, that will be available in English soon, fingers crossed. So while there's an ensemble cast in this book, perhaps the main character is Tokyo itself. In a way, the book shows an amalgam of angles on the city, but perhaps it is also a love letter to the city too. For its residents, in their own words, sometimes the city is boring, often a very lonely place at night, quieter since an economic downturn, in the story, the old is respectfully replaced with the new, especially old technology and means of communicating. Something about the call center advice line that Kanako works at felt very Japanese to me, though I couldn't necessarily tell you why. Um, the advi like advice lines are universal, but the loneliness and isolation of some of the callers and its professional setup sort of felt unique, like something very Tokyo to me. Imagery like canned coffee on night shift breaks, convenience store meals, strangers in the night who may or may not be trouble, the Shinjuku area being called the sleepless fortress, but more sleepy now than in the past, and the ideas that city people are more cynical about life and its possibilities, that they've given up on hopes and dreams. These are all very interesting images that run through the book. Though Tokyo is a big city, it's not one central location, according to this book, meaning that there are areas that people don't leave that much. They don't sort of necessarily leave their little section or don't need to. And that kind of makes chance encounters and people being linked to each other very high. There's a sense of fate that this book is threaded through with as though Tokyo itself brings people together and creates its own fateful coincidences. So I really loved soaking all of this up in this book and just spending time in that space. Though as someone who's never been to Japan, I feel like maybe some of the more subtle things might be a bit lost on me, but I don't think that matters as a reader. Um, yeah, it's like the city itself is seen reflected in glass and you find it by the way that everyone else lives their lives and is shaped by it. Sorry, my cat is um, once again inserting himself into the conversation. Grimmy, could you just settle down for a minute, sir? If it's not too much trouble. 
I think he just thinks I'm here to read him a story personally <laughs> every time I record. <laughs> anyway, this is a lovely small book with its vignettes of people's lives that reflect their larger uh, inner lives and concerns all at 1 a.m. with the kind of pondering that that late night hour tends to bring out in us. That late hour makes the whole sometimes a little dreamlike and a lot of the problems while impactful issues do not have major stakes or major, major emotional damage involved. There's a sense of the city taking a hand and uh, putting people's, you know, solutions to their problems coincidentally to hand. And um, I found this to make it a more gentle and relaxing kind of read. Everything felt quaint and mostly very safe, cozy and benign. But that's not to say that the book doesn't have stakes or that real world things don't happen here. But that after the level of, you know, to me, like drama and emotion and we're sort of bombarded with world events all the time here where I live. <laughs> Uh, or even the strong messaging and this sort of urgent immediacy and trauma of the current Western or especially North American novel, at least the ones that I am being offered by publishers to read and share with you. I mean, this just felt so much more like normal, real, everyday life, honestly. And it was, um, it's refreshing. So um, is this book for you? I would say read it if you like the ham and egg set at your Japanese corner diner. This is a wonderful literary fiction book about intersections of places, people, and lives. And I highly recommend this one. It's so, it's so well written and so interesting. Um, but it's also just a little bit different and refreshing too. So I really like this one. Um, and thank you to PGC Books who sent me this book to review and share with you guys. You can check out some of my other videos. I also have another channel and social, so you can find links below if you want more of that. And if you want to hang out again, remember to like and subscribe. And you can always leave a comment. Let me know what you thought or let me know what else you might want to see. Thank you.